my dear scholars, my dear researchers, my dear management students, let me welcome you to a very interesting and historical course, which is known as Why and When and How the History of Management Thought is Developed. While welcoming you, let us begin with the name of the Lord, who is actually the source of all these thoughts and ideas which a human being brings, process, and presents, and then comes up with new models, new theories, new frameworks, and new actions to be performed, maybe in the family, maybe in a city or state government, or maybe in an organization, public or private. So are you ready to begin this journey, to take this journey into the history of management discipline? To me, being a professor of knowledge management, I feel management has become a superset in the area and discipline of business administration. See, you call it marketing management, financial management, operation management, supply chain management, and on and on and on. Which means management, may it be general management, quality management, strategic management, behavioral management, which are all the different areas of management, how these areas were developed, how actually the thoughts came up, how the scholars and researchers like you put up these ideas while observing and collecting the empirical data around them, working in the organizations, working in the cities and state governments, working in the business sector, working in the army sector. So this is the reason that we like to study how these thoughts were developed over a period of time. As we see it today, when, where, how, and why these thoughts were developed. So briefly, we will take a journey and I'll take you on a cruise of history. So in other words, we will be looking at stories, stories of different people, which are actually ideas of different people which are related to the discipline of management. And speaking of management, since you are all scholars and researchers of management, it simply means there has to be certain resources and you as a manager, you as a official, you as an executive, you as a human being, you as a head, you as a chief executive, name it, whatever name you like to call. Because over a period of time, names have been changing. So with these resources, you have a goal or goals in the mind. And how are you going to achieve them? So as I said, history is not only stories. Of course there are stories. But these stories will share with you some new ideas which is a source of new knowledge. And remember, idea is nothing more than a piece of information, a piece of knowledge. And when these ideas are collected together, presented in a certain context and culture, being presented in a given environment will have its own relevance. I think you will be pleased to know and surprised at the same time, my dear management researchers and scholars, because you might be interested in research and scholastic, scholastic contribution in the area of management. I like to call that the management thought was developed over a period of thousands of years. When you look in the books of the Organization theory, because certain concepts in a given environment and a context and culture, when presented together by 
a person like you will be a theory. So in this case, we begin our history from Moses, Musa al Islam. 1500 years before Christ, he is the one, along with his father in law, as it goes in the books, Jithru, that was his name. He gave the idea of hierarchical organization. He presented the idea of span of control. Father-in-law of Moses gave him the idea, make one person head, lead, and ask ten people to report to him. That's span of control. One to ten. And then those ten, ten will be, ten person to each will be reported and keep on going, developing a hierarchical organization structure. So see, hierarchical organization, as we see it today, vertical structure, and span of control, how many people should be reporting to a person, to a manager, are as old as 1500 BC. And with the passage of time, we will go into the detail later on, but from Moses to Microsoft, I like you to come down to now from 1500 BC to 1980 AD. It is now AD because the calendar starts after the death of Jesus Christ. 1980 is the time when the Microsoft was introduced. The technology which process information was presented and it brought a new revolution. And I'm going from Microsoft to Mayoon. Mayoon is known to you, all of you. Remember Alibaba.com? He is the person whose name in Chinese is Mayoon. He is known as Jack Ma. So from 1980 to 2020, 40 years. Compare this 40 years with the last about 4,000 years. And see how much information related to management was collected and how these management ideas when the information and communication technology is now brought up in the organization is changing the management models, the business models, the economic models, the city and society and state models. This means, remember, pyramids were built in the time of Moses. Friars were there. Structures were built. Those were projects. People were used. Resources were used. Pyramids were made, right? That was the time of Moses. And then, Chinese walls. These were the goals. So, resources and goals are put together to be developed into a project, to be completed into a project, and then wheels and machines. Again, resources and goals. So my dear students, my dear scholars, the idea is that each new generation brings new idea, new theory, contributes to the old one and comes up with new models, new ideas, and the history goes on and the management disciplines keeps on expanding and the organization keeps on getting new shapes and you have to do new research. Thank you and thank you very much.